and about two inches from the uh, the uh, the uh, where it's going to overlap, you stop for a second. Okay, that gives you a little bit of working room, right, Tim? All right. Now, with a sharp razor blade, please no box cutters. And he goes on to say why no box cutter at the bottom. We'll go over that. Set the blade in the scribe line and cut the tape. So now he's going to set a blade here. So let me clear this up a little bit. All right. So now he's going to set, here's your scribe line, the tape is hanging over a little bit. He's going to set a blade in there, okay? You can adjust the gap by turning the blade slightly left or right along the scribe line, okay? Now, I'm sorry, set the blade in the scribe line, cut the tape, okay, that's the, that's the second part. So now he's going to, you're going to set a razor, a razor, and not box cutter, okay? And I'm going to tell you, he says, because it gives you too much leverage. So you're going to set a laser right in there, and you're going to cut it. And I'm going to guess, Tim, that that's because that gives you a nice, clean line right along that scribe line, which is the same line you're going to use for your next cut. And also, it removes any little dust or dirt or grit that might have got fallen or stuck onto the end of that uh, tape since you're unwinding it this way. And what it does is it gives you a clean, uh, new, new line there. Okay, so let's, let's, maybe I hope I'm right on that. If not, let me know. All right, so now he's cut it, okay? And now what we have is the tape is cut right there that where it was originally affixed, right along the scribe line. And we've stopped about two inches short of applying this tape so far. Now, continue to overlap the tape. All right? You can adjust the gap by turning the blade. No, no, set there. Okay, continue to overlap the tape. So now we've gone, and because the tape is overlapping, it's going to come up here a little bit. Right? And let's just say that right about there is where your tape stops, okay? And so now your tape is going to be on your cylinder. If it were, if we had that perspective again, you know, uh, your, your tape is going to be on your cylinder like this, okay? laying around there. So we've got an overlap here with the tape underneath. This is the bottom tape, having been cut first. Now set the blade in the scribe line and cut the tape. You can adjust the gap by turning the blade slightly left or right along the scribe line. Okay, if we were to cut at this point right now, perfectly vertical, right? When this piece of the tape comes down, it's going to butt up against the bottom piece and it's going to be too tight. So you kind of have to kind of develop a feel for how much you angle that blade, all right? And there could be other things. Sometimes you might have to angle it this way. You can kind of get good at that, all right? But in this case, you probably want to actually angle the blade a little bit this way, okay? So angle, cut. So it cuts that top piece a little bit shorter. When it comes down, boom, it bunts up nicely. That's where you have to practice. That's why he suggests you have to, you can adjust a little, okay? Now, now that we've done that, apply the tape just under the scribe line. I don't know, I, I kind of jumped around there, so you guys go ahead and read that yourselves. But I think I've interpreted what he meant up to this point, right? So now, You've got, you've got all that so far. You take this part away, right? You cut that part of the tape away. And now this piece of the tape will fall into place. And you'll have right here the butt happening. A nice cut, right? Okay. Now, let me share with you some random cuts, cut thoughts that he writes. These methods, in my opinion, should be used whenever there are scribe lines available. It will help in uh, preventing razor blade score lines. And that's true. You know, you got guys out there cutting on cylinders all the time and uh, they're, yes, you know, they're just getting cut all the time. And, uh, and when you have box cutters and you put down, you can bear down on those things pretty hard. The blade is rigid, the handle is ergonomic. Guy can put down some leverage on there, and you're talking about some deep grooves that are happening. Then they don't care about that. And a lot of guys, unfortunately, I hate to say, some of these guys just want to get the job done and go home, and they don't care. And uh, that's another story. 
No, 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 I'm not gonna say most guys, but there are guys like that, and that's unfortunate. There's guys that in every field, guys and girls. All right. Uh, one main reason is that do not. I, I, I mentioned earlier I do not like box cutters. One of the main reasons is that it increases the leverage on the blade, causing even bigger score lines. Especially on aluminum cylinders, this is an issue. Sleeves will be damaged easier too. I have yeah, because a lot of them are you know uh, composite materials or some kind of polymers and stuff like that. They're not even hardened steel. I have another method for cutting tape on sleeves as well. This product is called Cutmaster from Polywest Sleeves. It, you, it works fairly well. All right, let me talk about that. I, I took a look at that, and it's a pretty interesting concept. If I if I looked at it and I saw it right, it reminds me of a little tool that we used to use in the envelope industry for synchronizing, uh, where the holes on one cylinder would release vacuum, and the one on the, the would and the one right adjacent to it would suck vacuum, transferring envelope blanks through a machine, roll to roll. It's a pretty cool thing. Now watch this. Uh, board is not getting clean with these markers I'm using right now. I gotta get a different marker. All right. All right. Um, all right, that cut master, cut master thing, I think what happens is this. Here's your place owner again, okay? And uh, you got mounting tape. Uh, you started mounting mounting tape like this on the cylinder, okay? And now you've come over here. If I got that product right, it's a little wedge-shaped thing, something like this. And it's got a little bevel at the tip. And by bringing this tape around it and putting that little part right about here like that or something, your tape can be laid down on it, right? And then you're bringing the knife, and so let's say up here you have tape laying over it like this. You bring your knife right here, and you cut this off. Okay? And if that tape falls away, now you've got a clean cut against this straight edge, like that. And that piece of tape is going to fall down into there now that you've cut that off with that device, okay? You know that that's a that's a pretty interesting concept uh, for uh, for uh, sleeves and stuff like that where you don't want to cut it. I imagine, especially if you're not going to put plate material on and stuff like that, that could be a pretty interesting thing to look at. So uh, I'm glad you pointed out that, that out to me, Tim. That's a beautiful little simple thing that that seems to do a trick. It's pretty cool. Uh, but it be it works fairly well. Uh, also. When I know I have a plate that is not as long as my tape, 18 inch rolls, I don't cut a gap at all. For example, if the plate is 15 inches long, repeat, is 22 inches, I know I would normally, I would normally have to fill in the gap. This is something we can cover yet. All I do is figure out the placement of the plate cylinder, a market, cut the plate, that's it. All right. In a nutshell, how I'm going to interpret that, I'm not even going to draw it, uh, is that if, well, <laughs> I do have to draw something. If this is your mounting uh, tape, okay, you get the idea, right? If that's your mounting tape, and right here, this is in this example, 18 inches, okay. If it's 18 inches, and let's say your plate is 15 inches in this direction, okay, then what he's saying is, and and the cylinder is 22 inches around. He's not going to put that 18 inch piece of tape and then put another 4 inch piece of tape to make a whole lot, which we do a lot. We just wrap the cylinders in wide web completely and slap a plate on there. Uh, but he's not going to do that. He's going to factor in, hey, I've got enough tape there to cover the whole thing. So I'm just going to figure out where the center of this plate is. And then I'm going to figure out where the center of that tape is, put them together, and I've got enough tape. I don't have to wrap that around. Tim, I hope I got that right. Uh, I know this was choppy, but this is ugly flex old guys. So as long as it's up there, you guys got to work to follow this stuff, all right? I'm not going to clean this stuff up, so I apologize for how ugly it is, but that's the way it is. Maybe it'll get better one day, all right? All right, Tim, thanks a lot, bud. I hope this got you.